What's up, guys? This is DDP back with a belated college football Big 12 roundup update for you. I recorded this originally Sunday night, and I didn't like how it turned out, so I wanted to re-record it, and then Monday the footage corrupted. So here I am on a Tuesday, just trying to give you guys something for the channel, a quick update. There were two games in the Big 12 this past weekend. That was Oklahoma at TCU and Texas Tech hosting Kansas. So let's kick things off with Oklahoma at TCU. Now coming into the season, this felt like the two best teams in the Big 12 Conference. And while one of those teams has essentially been where we expected them to be, the other has fallen off significantly. TCU's quarterback play, they have a promising young ta talent in Robinson, but the kid has not been able to put it together. In fact, he gets benched in this game after Oklahoma rushes out to a 28-0 lead or 28-7, excuse me, 28-7 lead. And from there, he gets benched, Robinson gets benched, and the backup quarterback comes in and actually leads TCU to within four points of Oklahoma at 31-27. Now, unfortunately for TCU, this was all that they would mount in the way of a comeback as Oklahoma would turn on the afterburners and run them off the field 52-27. to Now, in this game, you have Kyler Murray going 19 of 24 for 213 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, only sacked once. At the same time, you had running the ball. Kyler goes another nine for 51. But the big thing to me is that Oklahoma has found its production in the running game. Now, this isn't the same kind of back as you would have with a Rodney Anderson or even a Trey Sermon, but Kennedy Brooks is showing out. The kid had 18 carries for 168 yards, 9.3 a pop, and a touchdown with a long of 43. For the season, I'm pretty sure he's still double-digit yards per carry right now, which is insane. So keep an eye on him because he might be the new workhorse for Oklahoma moving forward the rest of this year. Trey Sermon, meanwhile, goes 17 carries for 110, 6.5 a pop and two touchdowns. Now something to keep an eye on here, Trey Sermon did injure his knee, had to be helped off the field. No word yet on the severity of that, but it could be a concern for Oklahoma, who's already without Rodney Anderson. In the receiving game, C.D. Lamb goes five catches for 91 yards and a touchdown. Marquise Brown, four. Marquise Brown, five catches for 41 yards. A surprising game in which he was held under 100 and without a touchdown this season. The big thing for OU, it's X-Factor here. Lee Morris continues to get touchdowns. Just racking them up. Kyler Murray's former high school teammate gets two catches, two touchdowns, and 27 yards. The guy is a big target. And man, like 70% of his catches this year seem to go for touchdowns. So maybe you look at him more in the red zone. Other than that, you get a touchdown catch from the fullback. That's nice to see as well. And that's really, that's really it for the Oklahoma side. They handled their business very well. The defense, to me took good steps forward. This is the first game after firing Mike Stoops and the Oklahoma defense held TCU significantly down with regard to their total yardage. But more than just holding them down in terms of total yardage, they finally got their first red zone stop. They like the first time holding a team in the red zone to not a touchdown. That is such an incredibly low bar that's been set. But hey, that's where we were with Mike Stoops. They created some turnovers late, but honestly, not as much as I would like. That's still a concern for me. But all in all, man, the defense showed out. I, I am happy with the improvement in the defense. I don't know if Ruffin McNeil is the answer to stay defensive coordinator moving forward or if they should look to hire a new defensive coordinator this summer. But we'll see what happens. Ruffin McNeil, Lincoln Riley's former head coach when he was at, well, Lincoln was the offensive coordinator. Ruffin McNeil was the head coach at East Carolina. That was the connection there. And they both were on Mike Leach's staff at Texas Tech. So this guy has really carried on and been with Lincoln a long time. I would not be shocked if Lincoln tries to stand by him and make him just the permanent new DC. If that's the case, uh, I like Ruffin McNeil, but that does concern me a little bit. But let's take a look at the TCU stats real quick. Uh, Robinson only goes 3 of 8 for 21 yards and should have had an interception. Oklahoma's defense dropped two easy picks in this game. Uh, Bookie, in particular, should have had an easy pick six. Made a great read, great break on the ball, but just a terrible, 
terrible job actually catching it. That was surprising because he's a five-star talent who's got some ball hawk abilities and yet somehow doesn't have an interception yet at Oklahoma. Uh, Collins comes in, goes 7 for 17, 142 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. That pick came late after he had already injured his throwing hand. And the thing is, as soon as Collins came in, the TCU offense woke up. They went from down 28 to 7. By the way, the 7 came from a 99-yard kickoff return to rallying back furiously with two just broken plays, uh, broken coverages, I should say, by the defense for Oklahoma and TCU off to the track race. So they had something there. They had a jolt of energy. Oklahoma withstood it and then delivered a knockout blow in the second half. Rushing the ball, Collins had seven attempts for 36 yards. TCU did not run the ball well at all. Uh, let's see here. The next closest back, 11 for 34. Not a not a good game. TCU's X factor in this game overall was Turpin, who had five catches for 62 yards and a touchdown. He was also who had the kickoff return as well. So he was the one weapon TCU had in this game. I hear he's now suspended from the team because he got arrested for assault or something over the same weekend. So I don't know what happened there, but the guy's got something. He's a little spark plug. He's another small receiver, running back, whatever you want to call him. But there's something there, and I like his ability at the college game. But, you know, we'll have to see how things play out for him. So Oklahoma, back on track, moves to 7-1, and one, keeps them on pace for a potential rematch with Texas in the Big 12 championship game, assuming both teams can make it there. Pivoting now to Texas Tech. Texas Tech hosting Kansas beats them down 48-16. to I'm not surprised here because, one, Kansas historically is trash. Two, Texas Tech has actually been pretty good this year. So Kansas on the road. Bender, the quarterback, goes 18-41, of two touchdowns and a pick, sacked three times. Rushing attempt, 16 for 80 out of Williams. We got on the receiving end, 4 for 67 is their best guy there. Texas Tech still having to go two quarterbacks for now. Uh, actually, correction, Duffy only played a little bit. I bet that's in just uh, relief there. Obviously, you can tell I did not watch Texas Tech versus Kansas because that's not my jam. But Bowman goes 36 of 46 for 408. Three touchdowns, one pick, sacked twice. Duffy in relief, three, three for three, 33 yards. Nice job there. Rushing, they got 15 for 62 out of Henry as well as a touchdown. Felton, in two attempts, gave him 36 and a touchdown. King, 10 attempts, 30 yards, and a touchdown. So pretty good balance on the ground there. That's a that's a good balance for them. Wesley, nine catches, 155 yards, and a touchdown. And Vasher, five for 79 and a touchdown. Uh, they had Collins as well go five for 30 and a touchdown as well. So Tech, they're building something. Texas Tech might finally be putting the pieces together because when you look when people pivot and look at what all talent they have in the NFL right now they've had a staggering amount of talent come through you know they had Baker I know that's not where he's credited to but they had Baker first they botched that um but there you go number one overall pick had ties there they have Mahomes who is currently on pace to be MVP at this point uh 22 touchdown passes through eight games first eight starts which is absurd Uh, You got Grant uh, for Miami, who's doing a little something for them. You got Kiki Cutie, who, when he's been healthy, which hasn't been a whole lot in uh, Houston, he's been showing out. They've got a bunch of talent that's been coming through the last few years, and yet they've been perennially pretty much a 7-5 and team in the Big 12 under Kingsbury. So maybe they're finally bringing it all together. He can certainly, with his system... And with the offensive talent he can bring in, they can certainly do something. But you got to find a way to bring that defense in. And it looks like they finally might be doing that this season. TCU, I, I got away from this earlier, but bringing up Tech again reminds me. You know, Tech two weeks ago beats TCU 17-14 in Fort Worth. The fact is TCU has lost four times now this year. They are 3-4. and four. They have completely submarined for expectations this year. The Big 12 is going to be decided. Now, Tech might have something to say about it as far as tripping up one of these contenders, but the Big 12 is going to be decided between Oklahoma, Texas, and West Virginia this year. That's going to be the three dogs in the race. Oklahoma and West Virginia square off in the last week of the regular season, which means potentially, just like uh, we almost had years past, you would have a rematch immediately after. So it's like 
There's the one matchup, and then you get a rematch the next week. Now, with Texas doing what they're doing, maybe that's not the case. Texas is currently leading the Big 12, and they had a bye week this week, so it'll be interesting to see what they can do. Both OU and Texas still have to go play West Virginia. I think Texas gets West Virginia at home, which is their advantage. OU has to go on the road in a night game to West Virginia, which is much more of a concern for me. But we'll see. This is this is going to be an interesting race. The Big 12 is interesting as a whole again, which is nice because usually by the time we reach mm, November, mid-November, it's pretty much decided like, okay, it's you and you uh, and you guys have already faced off. You know, we'll just see what happens in the Big 12 title game. Now we've actually got a pretty good balanced run where I could see any of those three teams winning. Yes, West Virginia had a wildly disappointing loss last week. But I still feel like there's some talent there and something that they can do. They can certainly trip you up, and maybe this was the wake-up call for them. I think it kills Will Greer's Heisman hopes, and I think that it kills their playoff hopes. They don't have the name brand recognition of OU and Texas where they can absorb a bad loss. Texas is being Maryland. OU is really, right now, their one loss doesn't even look bad. It's the Texas who's suddenly in the top 10 in the country, and probably at this point with some other recent losses might be surging ahead heading toward top five. So it's actually looking like OU's one loss isn't even a bad loss anymore. But all the same, unless they get them back in a rematch that might happen, it's not going to matter for OU. So we'll see. You got to see what happens the rest of the way. But sorry again, guys, for the belated uploading of this. Hopefully the footage on this one holds up so I can actually keep this on the channel without any uh, blips or glitches like happened last time. So until next time, guys, Stay tuned. I will try to have this up next Sunday right after the games play Saturday. And uh, until next time, just remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.